So what have we done so far? We learned about work to back through two papers and we learned two methods of doing it. One was a skip gram model and the other one was continuous bag of words. Then we learned about GLOV and we saw that it is sort of related to a skip gram model. And the only difference is the distance measure that you're using. One of them is using the L2 norm to come up with its distances and the other one is using the cross entropy. But other than that, it's a weighted least squares and this is a weighted cross entropy loss. So there is a relationship between the two methods. Now the question is, so far I was telling you how to deal with words in your vocabulary. But what if there is a new word? There is a rare word in the vocabulary that you haven't seen during training and it shows up in your test data. How are you gonna deal with that? So there are these languages like German or even English that you combine multiple words together and then it's gonna give you a new word. So perhaps a good idea is to look at sub words rather than words. Not only you include your words in your vocabulary, but you're gonna include sub words in your vocabulary as well. So that's the idea of the next one. So we are gonna enrich our word vectors with sub word information. That's a big picture. But before we do that, let me quickly go through a recap of what we have done so far with the skip gram model because we are gonna generalize that. So you have a bunch of words and you have a vocabulary of size W and each little W in this set is a word. So it's gonna be the first word, the second word up until the last word in your vocabulary. You have a large corpus of your words and capital T could be much bigger than capital W. Can somebody tell me why? Because words are repeated. Exactly. So the same word can appear in multiple contexts and multiple documents. So capital T is bigger than W. And then we created this uh, objective function and we wanted to maximize the probability of the words appearing in the context of other words. So now C calligraphic CT is the context of the word C, the word T. So any word in this context we are going to take a look at that and try to maximize the log of the probability. So this is a skip gram model. And now we are going to try to model this log of P. If you remember, we were trying to do that. So this is a different perspective and different notation of coming up with the same formulation. You're going to need a scoring function, which is going to take two words, the input word and the output word, the word that you're interested in and its context. And then it's going to map that into a score. So the score is a value from negative infinity to positive infinity. How do you come up? Once you have your score, then coming up with the probability is easy. You just apply the softmax on it, the softmax function, to take a value that is from negative infinity to positive infinity and make it a probability. And it's actually going to give you a probability distribution. If you do a summation over WT, that summation is going to cancel by this summation and it's going to give you a 1. So the probabilities are going to add up to one. But then uh, we said all that matters is the presence or absence of context words. And that's why we came up with the idea of negative sampling. So you don't need to write down that summation all the time because this is going to be in the order of 10 millions. You can actually look at a word and say whether it's present or absent in the context of another word. And the way we did it was using the sigmoid function and you're going to see why this is a sigmoid function. It's actually 1, 1 over 1 plus exponential of negative x is the definition of a sigmoid function. So this is the log of the sigmoid function. And you know that the negative of the log of something is going to be log of 1 over that something. Okay, so we are using that property as well. So you can think of this as the uh, negative of the log of the sigmoid function. So this is for the positive case. You want to increase the probability of your positive cases, the presence of words in a context, and then you're going to show it a bunch of negative examples. And we know that another property of the sigmoid function is that one minus sigma of negative x is sigma of x. So this is basically one minus the probability. And because it is one minus the probability, you're decreasing the probability of the negative samples when you maximize this entire objective function. So increase the probability of the present context words and decrease the probability of the negative examples, the absent context words. 
So I'm going to tell you what is the scoring uh, function now. Uh, so don't worry about that. I'm going to tell you what that is. For the uh, escape gram model, the can, can somebody tell me what the score was? We did it. We did it in the first slide. Exactly. So you have a word vector for WT. You had a word vector for WC. And then you created a dot product between the two. And that was giving you the score. So does that answer your question, Sagi? Uh, yeah, I know we also talked about how often words, like the count, how often they appear together. Is that related? No. So that was one, that one was for the glove model. So now you're confusing two concepts. OK. So this is the escape ground model. And then what was our objective? We would look at all of the words in our corpus and then try to maximize this objective function. So you're increasing the probability of the words that are appearing in the context and decreasing the probabilities of the words that are not appearing in the context. And this L that you're seeing here is just a logistic loss function. So it's the log of the sigmoid. It's the negative of the log of the sigmoid. So this is exactly the same math as we did before. And for word to vec and in particular, the skip gram model, S, the scoring function, was that you had a word vector for WT, you had another word vector for the context, and then you would just multiply them together. So we did nothing here. This part of the slide is what we covered previously. But why did we do that? Because now, if you want to encode the subword information, the question is, where can you do it? What can you change? You cannot change your W. You cannot change your corpus. The probability is still the same, the log of the probability. So you cannot change that. That's your objective function. This uh, softmax, you cannot change it. It's still softmax. You can approximate it by presence or absence of words. There is some positive examples, some negative examples. This is still our loss function. This is the logistic loss function. So there is nothing to change there. The only place that you can change is your scoring, the way that you're going to score two words. So, and that's exactly what we are going to change to encode the sub word information. So the rest of it, we couldn't touch. The only place is here. So let's try to do that. For the sub word model, let's take an example. Let's say, where is your word? We are going to create, let's say, character n grams. And what is n? And let's give an example. Let's say n is three. So we are looking for character three grams. What they're going to be is that you have the beginning of the word as an extra symbol in your characters. And you have the end of the word as an extra symbol in your characters because you want to know where your word is starting and when it is ending. So let's do that and create the character three grams. There is the beginning word, WH. These are three characters. Then you have WHE. Then you have HER. And then you have ERE. -E, and then RE. The good thing about uh, these beginning and end characters is that uh, if you have the word hair, and this could be a word in your dictionary, then you're going to have a beginning and end after that word. And that's how you're distinguishing between this hair and the hair as uh, referring to somebody. Okay? So these are different things. So then if you were to take the n equals three character engrams of her, it'd be like carrot H-E? Yes. Here, okay. So you're going to have that. But then uh, what we're going to do here, we don't want to use our words. We still want to keep our words. We still want to keep where. So we're going to include that in our, in our character and grams that we are coming up with. So there is this one. So the same word, W-H-E-R-E, -E, is going to turn into one, two, three, four, five, and six components. And these are the sub words. Now for each word, let's say W is your word, in this case, where, you're going to have a set of n grams that are appearing in W. For instance, the set of three grams that are appearing in the word where are these ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. But then not only we do it for n being equal to three, we are going to do it for n equal to four, n equal to five, and n equal to six. The question is, why do we keep the entire word? Because that's actually one word in your vocabulary and you want to keep it. You don't want to lose the information on that. This is still in your training. 
we are doing this because maybe there is a word in your test data that is a composition of the parts of the word where, and we want to take care of those. And at the same time, the word where might appear in your test data as a word of its own. So we are increasing the size of our vocabulary by including these subwords. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, and do you go from three, which is a hyperparameter, I suppose, all the way to the end, or six is also a hyperparameter? Three, the lower bound and the upper bound are your hyperparameters. So you go from three grams up until six grams. And these you can actually study, the paper studies them, which one is the best. These are those ablation studies that you need to do whenever you write a good paper, okay? Okay, so far so good. Now, how are we gonna use this? We are gonna use that to come up with our scoring. For W, you had, uh, and if W is your where, and let's assume N is three, you're gonna have multiple Zs. You have a Z for this term, you have a Z for the other term. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six Zs. And those Zs are gonna create, each one of them are gonna have their own vectors, okay? So now you're associating a vector to each subword. And now your scoring is just coming from doing a summation of these Zs multiplied by Vs. And V is the word vector for C, your context word. And then in the end, if you see a new word, you're gonna create its uh, subwords, its set of subwords, set of n-grams, and then your word vector representation is just the summation of those. It's the summation of every single word, subword vector, creating that word. So it's as if you're creating a bag of n-grams to represent your word vectors. So this is gonna be your new word vector. The cool thing is that now you can apply this. The, the paper actually applies this to nine different languages, including Czech, uh, German, English, and Italian. And then you can study the performance of the semantic and syntactic tasks. You can use a skip gram model. You can use continuous bag of words. And then uh, you have the subword information skip gram. So this model is going to give you subword information skip gram model. And the performance is going to improve, at least on the syntactic tasks. And remember, this performance is on your test data. It's not on your um, training data. So this performance that you're reporting, for machine learning, you need to always report your performance on the test data. Nobody cares about your training. If you report a good result on your training data, nobody is going to care. Okay. Any questions so far about the subword model? So each word is going to have itself and its components in it. So it's a bag of itself and its components. So what's the question? So if I understand correctly, we assume that a new word will have all of the subwords in it. But what do we do when we have a word that doesn't have a subword? Uh, each word is going to have a subword. We are going to see that regardless of your training and testing. Let's see. Let's consider English first, and uh, let's like let, let's take a look at anarchy. You can uh, decompose anarchy to Anna, Nar, Arc, uh, RCH, CHY, etc. You can do monarchy. It's gonna do Mon, Narc, etc. Okay, kindness, politeness. Now you might have a word that is somethingness, like here, politeness and kindness, both of them have ness in them. Now that you decompose your words into subwords, if you didn't see politeness during training, now it's the testing time, but during training you saw polite and you saw ness, you can create a meaning out of politeness by taking into account the subword information. So that's why it is helpful. The situation is even uh, more interesting for languages such as German or French, because in German, you're gonna create a lot of words that are just concatenation of simple words together. So you're gonna see that a lot. So does that answer your question? I will go through what this figure means I shortly. Have a question about, but... I have a question about where we get uh, testing data. It seems a little different from other machine learning tasks, because if we would have like a, like a regression task, then we would set aside some of our, uh, I don't know, whole data to use as testing. But here it looks like we have these, uh, um, I guess, like pre-made or like self-chosen word associations for testing. Is that 
really what's happening or are we somehow like setting aside a chunk of our overall data and testing on that? Uh, no, so this is different. You're right. This is different from what you do. And because the task is different, the task is you want to associate meaning to your words. And because this is your final task, you want to actually test whether your method is learning any meaning. And one way to test whether you're learning any meaning out of the word, those words are tasks like this. Okay. So, so are right. there like... You are not taking your large corpus and then setting aside a portion of it. No, this is not what you're doing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that helps. There are um, intrinsic measures, though, like um, uh, perplexity, right? Uh, perplexity doesn't apply here because those are for language models. We are going to cover that later on. Got it. Here, you, what you want to come up with are meanings for words. You want to associate a word to a vector. That's what you want to do. Any other questions? So I see a question on the chat. How do you deal with ambiguity in constructing the word where? Uh, so if you remember, we are not including character. So we are not doing one grams. So what you are describing is how do you distinguish between where decomposed as WH, E-R-E, -E, or WH, E-R-E. -E. So we are not including characters because that's going to give you a lot of flexibility then. And it's going to become a character model. But yes, you are right. Those sort of things might happen. But then in the end, you are adding adding them up together. Well, I guess what I, my, my question was, um, when we encounter an unknown word and we're gonna sum up the subword representations to get a vector for the unknown word, um, there might be multiple ways to do it. And the question is, and presumably those will result in different representations. So my question is like, how is that resolved or does that just not occur? Uh, I think there is only one way to do it. Per each word that you have, you're gonna create three grams, four grams, five grams, six grams, and the word itself, you're gonna associate a vector to each one of those components and then add them up together. You're right, the ordering here is lost, but that's a feature of the model. So yes, you are summing up every n gram together. It's not one versus the other, all of them are in there. All of these n grams are gonna be in your representation. Can that pose like a problem for like an anagram, but I guess then it's the same word, but like, because uh, the, the beginning and ending ones have sort of like, uh, like have a difference, but like if you add it up, like if your word had W-H-E in the middle and also E-H-W, mm -hmm. depending how they were ordered, that made two different words, but the sum would be the same? Yes, so what you're saying, so if I were you, I wouldn't start looking for corner cases because corner cases are gonna get averaged out by the algorithm. Because in the end, this is a statistical method. And there is no other way of approaching a task as hard as language modeling or language understanding. So these sorts of corner cases are good when you're writing a deterministic code. But these are statistical codes that are gonna come out of deep learning. And what you're gonna look at in the end are these average numbers. How good is your model doing on average? Now the question is, yes, you are combining, you are representing each word by a bunch of n grams. The question is, which one is the most important one? So the exercise that you're doing here, you have distance. These are vectors. So you can measure the distance between two words. So you have a word representation for this word, or let's take a look at anarchy. You have a vector representation for that. And that's the summation of every single n gram from three up until six and the word itself that are appearing in the representation. So what we are gonna do is create a new word representation by subtracting every single one of those sub uh, words from our word. So in this addition, we are dropping one of the sub words. For instance, you're gonna drop WHE and then that's gonna give you a new word, word vector. This is the original word vector. You have a new word vector now you can, because these are vectors, you can measure their distance, their cosine similarity distance, and then sort them. So you sort uh, this sign, WH, WHE, HER, all of these engrams according to their importance, according to their similarity to the original word. And then you're gonna show the ones that if you remove 
are going to give you the biggest distance. So it means that you're losing your meaning and you're going to report the first, the top three of them. So for anarchy, C-H-Y, anar, anarchy were the most important ones. For monarchy, monarch was the most important subword. For kindness, ness was the most important and kind was the third most important. For politeness, polite was the most important. For unlucky, uh, un and unlucky were the most important. See, again, this is a corner case. You might say that uh, maybe this should be the most important and lucky, un and lucky, but then it's a statistical method. It's going to make mistakes. It's not going to be perfect, okay? Then you have lifetime, and this is perfect. It's giving you life and time as the most important components, etc. So this is one way of seeing whether the method is doing good on average. And another way of seeing it is the qualitative way, whether you learned anything important. Now let's take a look at another example and let's compare young and pre-adolescence and do the same exercise. How important are the sub words and how they are related? You can have the cosine similarity between uh, these components because these are vectors, you can compute the cosine similarity. The positive ones are very similar, the negative ones are very different. And some interesting things are happening, like adolescence here is a component of pre-adolescence, and then it is very related to young. So these two are real, these two components, young and adolescence, are very related. They're very similar according to your cosine similarity. Their vectors are very similar. So any questions before I move to the next topic? I was curious about, um, you were saying in this diagram above with finding the three most important sub words and you said removing them, you remove one sub word from the vector, like in that summation in the top right. Mm -hmm. And then you do the cosine similarity with uh, which original vector? The one which had all of the n-grams built in or just the vector representation of the original word itself? Uh, so no, the n-gram that included all of the components. So for autofile, you're going to have all of the components. And then you remove, I don't know, fire or auto and then do the cosine similarity. Okay. Exactly. So you say that's all the components, that includes the full word because we're including that as a component? Uh, say it again. So we're including the full word as a component. Like if we're like autofile, we're including that as a word as one of the n-grams. Yes. So so we're not everything except for the original word. Okay. Yes. Because otherwise it's going to be boring. The auto fire, the most important one is the auto fire. So it doesn't make sense to include that. Okay. You, you are interested in the sub words. How do we train the engrams or how do we? So these engrams, you're going to have a dictionary of them. So now your dictionary is no more these words, but it's the words in addition to the sub words. So G is much bigger than W. And for each one of those components, you're going to have a vector. And the way that you train it is the same loss function as before. So the only thing that's going to change is this S. Previously, your S was the dot product of two vectors. Now it's the summation of the dot product of a couple of vectors. So the only thing that changes is this S. But the training process is the same as before. You do negative sampling, and then you train the algorithm. Any other questions? So what have we done? Uh, we included subword information in this uh, in this paper. Then we included uh, words like phrases. New York Times. These are combinations of multiple words. We included them in our vocabulary. So now we know how to handle words. We know how to handle phrases, and we know how to handle subword information for cases where there might be a word. It's a rare word. We haven't seen it during training. But now during testing, we might encounter that. And this is actually how humans are going to solve the same problem. When we see a new word that we haven't seen before, we are going to look at its subwords and try to associate meaning to that word. So the process here makes sense. 